Good morning, everyone, and welcome back again to a new round of the Daily Gaming News here at the New Bind. My name is Nostis, and let's just jump right into the news. First bit of news is actually uh, Remedy Entertainment, the guys behind Control, and of course, also Alan Wake, finally got the rights back again for Alan Wake, which means they can go back and do maybe a TV show or a new sequel in their game form, which uh, <laughs> would be very nice, at least for the fans of the series. Of course, this means uh, just that they got the rights right now. Maybe they already started working on something because they knew they could get the rights back. But for now, we also know nothing much more. So just as the news bit, hey, I don't wake rights are back to the original developer. Another one of the news we have news about Age of Empires 4. And we saw an interview here by PC Games N where they talked to Adam Innsgreen, the Age of, Empire, Age of Empire series creative director, about the upcoming definitive edition of the second game. And they couldn't resist or ask a course about Age of Empires 4, and the official answer was, I'm happy to tell you that we're going to start talking about Age of Empires 4 later this year. As you know, there are two major events right now, Gamescom and XO, that Microsoft always does stuff for. So one or the other, maybe. And that's quite a tease, but yeah, it sounds good. At least this year we get an official news for Age of Empires 4, which is very nice. Moving on, we have news about Cyberpunk 2077 as well. And one of the two things is that actually there will be three different beginnings of the game, uh, depending on what kind of background story you want to have. You can have the Nomad story, the Corpor story, or the Street Kid story. And each of them actually begins in its very own way. And these decisions also influence how you react into the world, how people treat you, and so on. So it's really nice to see that the background story also influences in a much bigger way actually how the game, you know, treats you as a player. Just as like a good um, Dungeons and Dragons or like pen and paper rather um, game is actually, you know, interactive with the dungeon master and everything. Then we have also other news about other projects from CD Projekt Red regarding Cyberpunk 2077 because the big game that's coming out in April next year is not the only one. Apparently there's also a standalone multiplayer game and then there's also a third game, a sort of spin-off title that also works in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and is planned to come out in 2021. How many numbers? <laughs> so yeah, good luck uh, CD Projekt Red on getting all these things out without burning out. We know that some of you had some issues with that, so please don't, you know, crunch too hard to get these games out. Just de delay them a little bit. We know that you do good work. And wait. Then we have news from Mordhau. Actually, that this game has some very bad sort of problem regarding its community, actually, and how this, like, sexicity, sex toxicity, and <laughs> sexism is a um, much bigger problem, actually, in that game. So the developer actually has also trouble to get a hold on that they're a small indie dev team and uh, yeah the soul post i won't read it out here but check it out yourself it's quite interesting there's also an update from kotaku here in the second article about this game where the developers came forth and say hey we have a lot to learn when it comes to dealing with this and we're trying very hard also there was actually one claim made that they are planning to do a height other ethnicities uh, button which is not true so they want to deny that so that's out there as well Interesting to hear about that game itself. I have not played it myself, don't know much about it, but surely enough, uh, you gotta always make an effort to keep your community as clean enough as you want it to be, and if it's that rampant, as the article at least makes it look like, it's not a good state. So good luck on the developers actually getting a hold on that. Next bit of news is actually about uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you get also some benefits in Craft That Auto Online and Red Dead Online. You get some instant cash and also 50% bonus on online multi multiplayer purchases like uh, for gta box and the red dead online gold thing that they have just so you know then uh, there's another cool article about the blackout mode from black ops 4 where the dlc weapons actually are influencing in a much bigger way actually that randomized battle royale mode so written by se doster thank you very much for that check it out yourself it's a very lengthy article yet again but also very interesting how you know, loot boxes are actually influencing the real world game itself in a way like as we see here. And of course, if you're interested, there's also new gameplay out from the official Halo channel about the Halo Reach PC version, which had a test flight last weekend. We talked about it yesterday, where people were actually getting banned for playing that game and sharing it around to others who were not invited. So 
You don't need to wait much longer. Here is official gameplay for that. 17 minutes, the first full mission that we have here. There was not much more in the test as well, so you don't miss out on anything. And I gotta say, it looks really nice. So I can't wait to play it myself very soon once it comes out over on PC. We start with Halo Reach and then go through the series edit as it chronologically uh, progresses. Then in other news, we have a new weapon coming to Destiny 2. I want to stream that later today. So on twitch.tv slash the new bite, probably 7 p.m. Central European summer time. We're going to start the quest for that when the actual reset happens. It looks very cool because that weapon seems to be able to buff and heal your allies and also, of course, kill the others. And it's the very first exotic weapon that's not a remake from Destiny 1 for a while. We had a few games uh, weapons coming back again so this one actually is a brand new one and i can't wait to get my hands on it through the new quest starting today then if you are at gamescom we also have a new vr game showcase there are six developers coming together to show their games and they have a wide variety of games actually there's the walking dead onslaught and then there's also something like the curious tale of the stolen pets so yeah if you so yeah, if you're at Gamescom, just like the new ideas, Emily, Daniel, I will all be there. We'll probably also take a look at these games and then make a report about them. Check it out yourself if you're also here and uh, have a nice time. Maybe you say hello if you see us. It'd be cool. Then if you play Super Mario Maker 2, that's also a very cool thing. Matt Thorson, the level creator and general you know, programmer for Celeste, another great platforming game, also does Mario Maker levels. And also we know his Maker ID as he shared it around. So if you want to follow him, do that because his games are great, definitely great. And he probably also does very great Mario Maker levels as well. I don't have to play them because I already trust his work. Then, in other news, there's also a list here on Kotaku by Jason Schreier about the best speedruns of summer games done quick. So if you want to have a hint at what's really entertaining, check out that list. For example, Grand Poo World 2 by Mitch Flower Power in 1 hour, 7 minutes and 36 seconds. I don't know what this game is about, but it has Mario in it, so it's probably a hack game, and these are always fun to look at. And in the last bit of news, we have first pictures from the Witcher series that's going to happen on Netflix. And it's actually not that bad. People are not that disappointed anymore seeing Henry Cavill, you know, the former Superman uh, actor, now as uh, Gerald the Witcher. And we can see the first pictures here. Some people say it's like, oh, Legolas dressing up, uh, not that cool. But I gotta say, just because he's clean shaven, I don't know why that is too bad. He doesn't have that many, you know, scars in his face, for example. But yeah, that's just one thing. It's an interpretation of the game. We have pictures of Jennifer, played by Anya Koratla. In Siri, played by Freya Allen. And these are not the only pictures, there's also a few more, like close ups of the characters here. And it's actually not that bad. I mean, look at the iris here, it's purple. So they do some creative work with that, you know, to give it a more magical feeling. And I gotta say, Henry Cavill here, not too bad. I would, you know, I would say it's an okay version of The Witcher. But of course, see for yourself, links in the description down below, of course. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about these actors and their roles, of course, how they portray them here in the coming Witcher series. Very excited to talk about that once that releases and watch it myself. And that has been it again for the gaming news here at the New Byte. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to do this more live again also. I did a test run today on Twitch.tv where I had the microphone off. That was embarrassing. Turn it on later on, but yeah. So this is actually a recording that I did after the live stream, but check it out. Twitch.tv slash the nude bite. Check the notifications on and actually, you know, make the moves because it's going to be worth it for your time. And uh, my name is Marcus. I'm out and thanks for watching. Bye bye.